The Get Down is brought to you by Digital Music Pool. Digital Music Pool is the ultimate record pool for professional DJs looking for the hottest tracks and exclusive hits updated daily in an easy to use platform. You can find exclusive edits from myself, Cream, Adam B., Andrew Marks, Angelo the Kid, Armin Averro, Chumpian, Dan FX, Castra, Pat C., and Samus J. only on DMP. And we're giving you a chance to try their service for just $9.99 for the first month. All you have to do is click the link in the show notes or on the Get Down or Cream Instagram pages, create an account, and enter the promo code CREAM at checkout for your discounted month. DMP is my go-to record pool for new and exclusive music to play in my sets. So become a member for just $9.99 for the first month with the code CREAM and check it out for yourself. Click the link in the show notes or on the Get Down or Cream Instagram pages to sign up now. You will not be disappointed. If you love listening to The Get Down, you will love the video version of our show on YouTube even more. With all new audio and video upgrades, we've taken the show to the next level. On YouTube, you get to see our facial expressions, hand gestures, and real passion we have for this industry and for helping you grow your DJ business. Click the link in the show notes or on the Get Down Instagram page to watch the podcast now or search Get Down DJs on YouTube. We would greatly appreciate if you subscribe to our channel, like, and comment any questions you might have that we could bring up on the show. What's up, guys? Welcome to the 115th episode of The Get Down, brought to you by Digital Music Pool. My name is Cream. Gary W. here. It seems like it's been a while since you and I just recorded solo. It has been. It has been four weeks. Well, we took a little time off, then we did Miami, and then we had two guests our last two episodes. So it's, it's, it's been, been a while. It's been a little bit, but it's good to be back. Um, I always like this format. I mean, we, we could have guests for, we have guests lined up for weeks right now, for like weeks and weeks. So like we could do a guest every week if we really wanted to, but um, it's good to, to get these little episodes in because I think that we go through uh, things as a business and also as DJs, which we're going to talk about today, that, um, that, are, that we can only talk about when it's just you and I and it's not somebody else on the, on the pod. So Yeah, I agree completely. Um, I think there's a good balance between you and I and then having guests. I think it gives something different to the to you guys as the listeners and the and the viewers. And I think it's you know, you probably get tired of hearing me and Gary just yak away but, over here. But it's funny, like if you go back through all of the episodes, we're very streaky. Like we'll go through a streak of guests and then like a streak of you just you and I. Um like somewhere in like the fifties, we had like four or five guests in a row. Yeah. Um and then that happened several times. Obviously, over pandemic, we had a bunch. Then in the 50s somewhere, and then somewhere up in the 80s, there was a bunch. And now we just went through another streak like that. So it's it's it yeah, always I balances. What's, what's been cool out. to see is all the feedback on the pod, like the, the stuff we've been doing on social. And I think it's allowed us to gain access to a higher tier of guests. Not that we haven't had good guests on because we've had great guests, but some people that are just on the higher end of artists and, you know, the biggest open format DJs we've had conversations with. And I think you guys are going to be excited about who we have coming on here in the next couple months, but for sure, let me ask you this. I'm going to throw a curveball. We have a date and a location and a time for our next get down DJs meetup. Should we make that announcement right now? You know, let's do it. I think we do it. And because, you know, as this comes out a little behind the scenes here, we're, 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 oh, we're actually a week ahead. I'm really proud of us. Uh, I think next week, that's probably a great time to, to let people know about this. So yeah, definitely. Let's put it out there. All right. So if you guys don't know what the get down meetup is, Gary and I started these networking events when we when Get Down was like an idea. And the whole premise of it was to bring DJs together who live locally, tri-state New York City, Jersey, Philly, uh, to kind of come together and get to actually meet the other DJs who are playing in the market. Uh, a lot of collaborations have come out of these, these networking events. And as we've done more and more, we've tried to make them better every time. We did a live podcast last time. 
Uh, we had one at Splice Studios in New York City where we had uh, a great panel of guests and we had uh, Kova doing uh, some some live production critiques of, of you know artist songs. This time we're partnering with Parari Production Academy and we're going to do a live breakdown of one of Mikey's Parari's tracks. So you guys could really get an idea of how does he make music? What is what's his thought process? What does he how does he process his sounds? So I think that'll be really valuable. Uh, we're also going to have a great lineup of DJs, but it is Wednesday, May 17th in Jersey City at Corgi Distillery for all you guys who came to last year's meetup. Uh, it's the same location. We just thought it's set up perfectly for what we're trying to do, and it's it really is relatively easy to get to. So May 17th, 7 p.m., Corgi Distillery in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, this is an RSVP uh, event. Yes. So you guys have to have a ticket. It's free. Uh, and we would love to see as many DJs and producers come out and, you know, chop it up. Yeah. You know what? That that venue, we haven't done a repeat venue yet, but that venue is set up and it's segmented in a way where we can still have the DJ performances and then also have another aspect such as it was the podcast last time and like you yeah. said this time, the Ferrari Production Academy. Not a lot of venues offer that. So, um, and then th they also have a, a beautiful outdoor area where you can sit outside and eat. And I know you guys are just getting a taste of the of the good weather and everybody's all hyped about it. I saw on Instagram yesterday and everybody's pumped about the, the, the nice weather there. So it's just a nice way to take advantage of that as well. It's a good time of year to do it. Um, and I super look forward to seeing everybody out there because we did, you know, we did a lot of, I met a lot of new people last time and we yeah, had some, for sure. some really, really, uh, cool artists roll through as yeah. well. So if you guys are on the fence, don't be intimidated, come through, introduce yourself. There's always some big artists hanging out. Yep. Um, you know, all the get down guys will be in the building. So it's, it's a, just a great opportunity. All you guys that always hit us up about wanting to work together another great opportunity for you guys. So for sure. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So let's, let's get into our first topic here. Uh, Gary and I pretty regularly have conversations with various owners and managers from a week to week basis. And we were having a conversation with one of our, our managing partners and we kind of walked away with, uh, some feedback for our DJs. And, and what it was, was you have to go in there and be a headliner DJ from the jump. And it, it's something that we can convey to our DJs, but I think it's really important. And it's a great opportunity for us to talk about it here. Like, what does it mean to be a headliner? What is it? What are the things that you should be doing to set yourself apart and really step into that next level of DJing? Right. Cream, you there? I'm here now. My we're having bad. a couple technical difficulties, but I think we're good. Yeah. So yeah. So so we we had this conversation, and and Gary and I were talking in the back. I'm like, how do we explain this to our guys? And I think this is a great opportunity to explain it to you guys who are listening. Like, what does it really mean to be a headliner? What are some of the things that you you should be doing? You know the the number one, the first and foremost is, is coming on and presenting yourself as a headliner. Right. And, and what does that look like? That looks like coming in and, and coming in with a lot of energy, your first track, you want to hit, hit the people and, and get their attention first and foremost. Right. Whether that's an intro, um, or in this, in this instance, uh, they're coming, you're coming off other entertainment. So you're going to play maybe a little off of that other entertainment and then present yourself big like a headlining act with, like I said, all of this energy and like a big headliner um, song, whatever it might be, right? Secondly, I think the most important thing is having energy on stage and making it look like, you know, you're, you are the show, right? Interact with the crowd, not just on the microphone, but like really be, be engaged with the crowd, Right. I know that's not everybody's MO, and, and if that's the case, then these types of gigs aren't really for you, right? Um, you yeah, know, and if the, that's not your MO, you better learn if you want to be a headliner DJ. You right. need to have at least a little bit of a microphone presence. Right. Having microphone presence and then a stage presence is huge, right? We always, yeah. we, we've talked about this in the past. Like, Cheesy's got great stage presence. There are artists that have great stage presence. 
You know, I, I think offhand, like Fisher, great stage presence, always involved, always involved, always energetic. So I think those are two main things that right off the top, when we go and ask somebody to go do one of these sets, um, those are the two things that I focus on first. What are some other things that you that you like to? Uh, oh man, there's a laundry on? list for me. But I as know. far as the actual DJing part of it, um, you know, I think you, like you said, the big intro track is is a great one. It's it's not always the case where you come on and you're able to do that. Right. So I think number one, being a headliner is understanding at what point of the night are we at in the venue, right? If there's an opener, let's say, if the energy's not there yet, you can't come in with your big EDM intro with a huge EDM drop. You still have to like continue to open the crowd to get them to that point. Maybe they need to get have a couple more drinks. Maybe they need to start dancing a little bit. Uh, so I think that's one really important thing. Uh, I think the next thing, we said microphone, but I do think when you do do that big intro, if you're going to do something like that, or when you do switch the energy from opening to headliner, because this goes for not just if you're an opener slash headliner, but if you're playing a whole night, we've talked about it before, right? You're yeah. opening for yourself and then you're headlining for yourself. So yeah. I think it's it's a mental state. And I think uh, coming in on the microphone, introducing yourself and be like, what's up guys? My name is Kareem. I'm from Jersey. We're going to fucking rock out tonight. Just right. something very simple to let people know that the vibe is about to change, right? Uh, I think turning the volume up is a great way to also do that. You know, you turn the volume up. People start to feel and hear the music a little louder. The, the, the rumble of the bass is a little heavier. Yeah. Uh, so I think all of those things, and then, like you said, Cheesy's presence, I think coming in and smiling and, you know, looking at the people that are in front of you and, you know, if someone has a sign on their on their phone, like, Interacting with those people, yeah. I think that's really important too to build a little bit of a rapport with the people that are uh, that are there. Oftentimes, when I go to plug in or if I'm going to, into the, to, if I'm setting my computer, someone comes and make a, makes a request, and I'm like, "Listen, I haven't even started DJing yet." <laughs> but I think it's like I'm about to go on. We're gonna rock. Like letting just showing that confidence and having that presence is really important. And smiling and looking like you're having a good time, that energy is gonna pass to the people in the crowd. And I think. Those are a lot of things that are really important just from the music side of things. Those little interactions with different groups of people around the room, you have no idea how far that goes. Like I, I know the last few um, shows that I've had over in New York, like I, I have these little interactions, whether it be a sign on the head, whether it be like a, somebody yells, hey, play this, or you know, maybe they'll, they'll do like a thumbs down or whatever it might be. You have this little interaction go on, and I realized like two, three hours into my set, all of those people that I interacted with are still there, right? Whether whether they're like booing you or whatever it might be, like <laughs> as long as you like have this like positive, friendly, smiley interaction, like they can't hear you, obviously, the place is pretty loud and you're pretty far away, you know, up on a stage or whatnot, but like I think having that personal connection makes that person or that group want to stay there a little more. Um, and so to just kind of just bury your head in your laptop is not the way to go about any of these sets. It's a good, that's a great way to not be invited back. Yeah. You know, these places are uh, setting up these stages and these places are making the DJ the center of attention for a reason. They want to create an experience for their, uh, for their patrons and they're focusing that experience around the DJ. Not every place does that. You're not getting stuck. You know, some places you get stuck in a closet. Some t places you get stuck in a corner. The places that are going out of their way to present this production uh, and make it about the DJ, we, we all bitch and complain enough that it's not always about the DJ. We have to go above and beyond for the places that do make it about the DJ. Yeah. You know, I think there's other things also that play into this this role of like, what does it mean to be a headliner, right? Honestly, I, I know people might hate this, but your look plays a role into being an artist and being a headliner too, right? Like, it's part of it, whether you like it or not, right? So when you go to work, you have to look presentable, right? Be a little trendy. Maybe you're wearing your Jordans or, you know, you're wearing Kith or what. I don't know. It's not my world, right? I'm what, not I'm not Parari who's into the style and stuff. I whatever, wear my sneakers, whatever your I wear thing my, is. my hats, and I right. try to look at least, you know, trendy and presentable and nice. Right. 
I don't think and there's I think a that's part of it too because venues are looking at that and you know, I have this red and black thing going on, right? So all of my cream stuff is red and black. And like a lot of times if I'm going to play a bigger show, I'm going to wear my cream merch or at least wear my red and black stuff that fits with my brand. And this, this is all stuff that goes beyond just playing the music. There's no playbook to it, right? You don't have to wear a certain thing, but you do have to look presentable. Number one, you, you should you should look like an artist to some to some extent. I think like have your own stuff. Usually, people that are artists and people that are, um, you know, creative, you you have your own style. Just re- maybe take that style and like amp it up like times two or three, right? And be a little more eccentric about it. I think that's it's always good to set yourself apart from the patron, right? Like my thing for the longest time was I wore a bow tie like every gig for like years, right? And that was like, it was a little weird back then, right? But like it was, it was it's just- It's memorable, it's memorable. It's something something that just kind of sets you apart. Like, you know, like Cheesy walks into, and I know we brought him up already, but he's just top of mind, obviously. But like his haircut and his like cut off sleeves, he like, he looks, he doesn't look like something that's just hanging out at the bar. He looks at somebody who's about to come in and, and, and create a performance for you. Um, we talked about this with Alex Dynamics for a little bit. And, you know, I've been in scenarios where I'm in a place and I'm like, well, that guy definitely, uh, that guy definitely is an artist of some sort. I don't know what he does, but like, oh, we saw a Chris, Chris Angel. Is that the, is that the uh, magician? Yeah. I saw him in Disneyland and I'm, and, and like, I don't know who, what he looks like from a hole in the wall. Right. But he had like his getup on, like his like what I what looks. When you're like, I don't know like who this costume. guy is, but he's somebody I can like, tell. I don't know who he is, but he's got eyeliner on and he's somebody. And my sister knew who he was, and I was like, yeah, see, like that. And it it, it brought up the uh, Alex Dynamics con- conversation, and I'm like, that guy is always in quote unquote character. He's always you know presenting like he's on stage. Maybe yeah. that is just the way he dresses, but like you can just tell. Right. Don't just don't come in in sweatpants, you know, and, and, and like a sloppy T-shirt. Um, you, you, you have to kind of come correct when you're especially when you're up in front of a lot of people performing. You have to set right. You have to set. I'm not Anthony when I step into the club. Right. You're I'm cream. And you have to act as cream when you walk in and you have to have that mind state. It lets you get into like, all right, it's performance time. We're all performing, guys. And the, the higher levels you go, the more you have to perform. It just is what it is. Yeah. And I think if you have that mind state as you're starting, let's say when you if you are playing whole nights right now and you're not headlining with an opener type thing. You have to think about it like that, right? Like think about it in that way, whether you're playing at a bar or not, because people are going to remember you that way and you're going to create fans and they're going to think of you more as a higher end artist than some DJ who's just playing in the bar, Anthony, who's playing in the bar type thing. You know what I mean? Definitely. Definitely. Um, A couple other things just from, uh, from this perspective, but If you're a a headliner and you're going to play, let's say, a two-hour headline set somewhere, I would strongly suggest using USB sticks. I think that's another way to present as more of a headliner, you know? The only people who are really doing that in nightlife are people who are going and touring and playing big shows and playing with artists because that's how all of the artists DJ. Unless you're Jazzy Jeff, unless you're Scratch Bastard, unless you're one of these super high-end technical scratch open format DJs, I think it's it's something to play around with. And with the 3000s, it's so easy to do it. Like it yeah. really is. So, yeah. so that's one thing. And then the other thing is just, I can always tell a DJ's skill and how, how far along they are. If they can like really rip through songs, especially if there's an opener who's like kind of playing the whole thing, a great way to let your crowd know that, hey, it's headline time, I'm here, is like, come on, and like bang through a bunch of songs really quickly and really cleanly. And it's like, oh shit, the volume's up. The DJ's ripping through songs. They got on the mic for the first time all night. Like all these things adding up creates this big energy shift in the room. And it'll let the audience and the crowd know like, oh shit, the headliner's here type thing. Yeah, You don't even have to say anything. You, If you know music and you go out a lot, you could just tell the energy is shifted in the room, you know? For sure. Um, it's something that I did last, uh, last time I was, I was up there. Uh, I like banged through 
you know, I did it. I did it too much to the extreme. I feel like I banged through like ten songs in like ten minutes, and it was all like really super, you know, high energy peak hour stuff. And then I looked up and I'm like, I got four hours to go, <laughs> which was tough. But um, that is a great way to do it. I, I, I think that. What do you think? Like, if what if your opener's kind of ripping through tracks? Then, then, like, kind of, is there a different way that maybe you can differentiate yourself? I mean, I know, you know, we talked about all the other stuff, the mic work and and all that good stuff, and the interacting with the crowd. But like, do you do you think that you want to present maybe a different style? For sure. If you're playing an open format room and it's not a big EDM spot. If the DJ's playing hip hop, I'm going to play Latin or house or something right. different. If the DJ's playing EDM, I'm going to go do a quick hip hop headliner set just to do something different again, to change the people's ears in the room and let them know that something different is happening. Right, right. Um, and listen, as the headliner, you could let the DJ before you know where you want them to leave you off if you have a plan. If you're in the room and you're watching, you're saying, all right, he's been hitting a lot of hip hop. I want to go do EDM. Like, let's let him continue down this, this hip hop down tempo path and have him just bring up a transition the last couple songs so that I can go in on the EDM. And as yeah. a headliner, it's your right to, to do that, you know, for sure. I, I mean, I think if you have a good, if you have a good opener, they're always going to ask, right. Where do you want to be left off? That's number one. Um, but you're right. If you, if you never know, so go up to that person beforehand and, let them know, like, this is where I want to go into. Yeah, Leave me here or stay here and I'll transition up, whatever it might be. This is something that I've, you know, I've been tr learning for years, right? Like, I'm still learning how to be a better headliner. And one piece that I took from not just, like, the bigger artists that I've played with, the cheat codes and, you know, people like that, I'm just seeing them actually perform. But seeing some of the really high-end headliners here, like a Nico Oso and some of these other people who are really great on the mic and really great in their in their stage presence, it's like, if there's a stage, like, I'm going out there with the mic and I'm, like, interacting with the crowd and I'm throwing high fives and I'm taking videos with my phone. And, like, yeah. I think a lot of that stuff in this day and age, it's kind of standard. And it's, like, something that, not that you should be doing because, obviously, you have to feel comfortable and be able to execute it, but... You know, Revis, I see Revis doing more and more of this and he really presenting as a headliner more and more. And it's really great to see Angelo, same thing. Like yep. it's part of your growth as an artist and as a performer. And it's just something that you, you got to learn and you got to go do it in order to learn how to do it. You know, you could watch everybody, but you still got to be able to go do it. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get, the more you'll find what works for you and, and what doesn't make you feel out of place and what makes you feel just at home on stage. And, um, so that that's what it is, but those those are good guidelines to start you out, right? And then kind yeah, of work sure. it out and see what what works for you and, and what's best for your brand and and your personality. Um, but I think you know, I want yeah, go ahead. You want to add to this? I was just going to say I think like this was a really really great conversation, and I think uh, in one of our upcoming episodes we should probably do one on like how to be an opener type thing. And I know a lot of that stuff we've talked about, but I think it'd be good to just get it all out on the table of things yeah. that. Uh, younger DJs and opener DJs should be thinking about. Now, speaking of being a headliner and, you know, ha being used to being on stage and all this good stuff, I've had one weekend of DJing in eight weeks. And I was sitting there two days ago and yesterday and I'm downloading and I, for the first time in a long time, felt a little lost as far as music's concerned. Um... You know, I'm not somebody that sits in my bedroom or in my office here and, and, and practices. It's something I am going to do now that I feel this way for the next seven days until I leave to come up north to, to work a bunch. Um, but I'm thinking about those headlining sets, right? I got like, I think I have like three bigger headlining sets where like I'm going to have to be on stage and be performing. And I'm like, I've, I'm, I'm so out of just, I'm just thinking about just my DJ set, my music, uh, and what I'm going to do in that regard and not even thinking about all the stuff that we just talked about. Um, so now I even have more anxiety. Thank you. But, um, I, it's, it doesn't matter how long you do this, right? It's been what, however, 20 something years, 20 plus years of doing this and like not doing something consistently is, is daunting. 
when it comes when it comes down to it. Um, now, listen, after two or three sets, I'll be fine, right? And I'm playing a lot of home home like home field advantage type places to to start the weekend, and I do this kind of on purpose to get warmed up into the into the bigger stuff. Um, but like, I, I don't know, like, how would you advise like? if you're not DJing every weekend, how do you advise to stay sharp and, and stay on top of your game? I, I, that amount of time for you is like, that's a long time, man. I'd be, I'd be nervous and worried too. So I, there's been times where even now where I'm only DJing two to three gigs a week instead of seven or eight, sometimes I'll start playing and be like, wow, I'm glad I'm playing a longer set today. I could like warm myself up, get the hands right. moving a little bit, but a few things. Number one, definitely set up your gear. I would definitely, you know, get the hands moving. I think it's important to stay sharp, you know, like, you know, we're not like master technicians, but I think it's important to still, you know, work on some cuts and just get, just go through the motions of, of, uh, of what we normally do on a week to week basis. But some things that I would suggest would be number one, keep downloading music every week and stay in the flow so that you don't feel behind in that. Right. You know, don't let it go more than two weeks uh, of just downloading and organizing music. I think that's really important to just see like what the trends are, what people are making, what's coming out. And when you download like one big batch after two months, it's like harder to, to keep a feel for that. Yeah. I think the other thing would be since you're not out in nightlife and watching DJs, I would go listen to some, some like DJ sets. That's actually, so really- maybe like, Really find some advice. open format DJ that you really like and just go listen to one of their sets or, you know, ultra Miami, there's 8,000 DJ sets that are out there. Go listen yeah. to somebody that you really like to get that always motivates me and gets my creative juices flowing a little bit. Right. And just seeing like, well, if the big artists and the big DJs are playing this stuff, like I'm in the right place, or maybe right. I haven't really thought about it in this way. And maybe I should try to work this style of music into my, into my open format sets. So I think that's another good one. You know, it was kind of inspiring for me. I was just scrolling through TikTok and just the different music that comes across my feed. Really, I've been screenshotting a ton of stuff, which I really need to sit down and and download all of it and see kind of where it fits into my folders. Um, But that's even been, I know we just talked about this on one of the episodes, but that's been really inspiring to me to like hear these different mashups, especially that are on TikTok and and Instagram Reels. and then just seeing and hearing all of the different genres that are coming out of that. Uh, I think that, you know, all of that has been inspiring in a very short term thing that like, I have to, like, I have to be on those platforms for, you know, things that we do. Um, so that's not wasted time. I feel like that's, you know, thinking about that as work, uh, when it relates to music is important as well. Like you should always be on, right? Like no matter where you are, I feel like your brain should always be in in DJ mode in some capacity. So when you do hear music, you can make note of it and be like, okay, well, how can I incorporate this into my set, especially in the open format world? It's just really important to always be taking in new new sounds. Um, now, one advantage to, to to being off and and having you know one weekend uh, and then three weekends in between each. I feel like it's coming in super, super fresh too. Like with like a fresh brain where like I'm not programmed to, it's like, oh, well the crowd last week reacted to this. I have to play that. You know what I mean? Like I already know the stuff that people are going to react to. It's the newer stuff that I'm not going to know yet until I play it. Right. Um, but really how much of that has come out in the last three weeks? I don't know. Like I, I've, I've been looking, there has been a bunch of turnover on the, uh, on the music pools. So you download all the stuff that you think is going to work, but I like to just kind of go in and maybe play something new. Like, like, like I said in uh, episodes past, I've been listening to a lot of like 138. Like I'm thinking about playing a lot of 138. Like I've I've heard a bunch of vo- old vocals that I know people will sing along to. That's in that 138 range. Maybe I could play a little more throwback stuff, and maybe I will take that chance to do that. Where, uh, where I wouldn't have if I was DJing every weekend. Because we all do get stuck in these ruts, right? And sometimes when you're DJing multiple times a weekend and you literally take those four days off and then you're back on the horse on Thursday or Friday, well, sometimes it's like rinse and repeat. Like I'm playing the same thing over and over again because I know these sets work. Right. You know, so 
I look at it as a, an advantage in that way because I do have these things in mind that I do want to execute and I do want to play. And if they fail, they fail. I'm going to do them in my home base spots just so like, it's not a, it's, it's not a headlock, like a, it's not a stage show where things are going to fall flat on their face. And then you got to kind of scramble. Um, I'm thinking about if I go from one weekend to the next without putting new music in my Serato and organizing it, I feel like my set's going to be stale immediately because part of what helps me get through if I'm playing a whole night or a longer extended set, part of what helps me get through that is being able to like try out some new music and just see how it sounds on a, on a club system and see how people react. Even if it's like an earlier dance song, let's say. Yeah. So maybe like not DJing for so long, you're going to have a lot more newer music. It's going to make, be really exciting to go and try some stuff out and test some stuff out. And so that, that on the other side of the spectrum, that could be cool. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a balance. I, I, you know, there, there's, there's an advantage of, of being, uh, of having done this for so long that there, you always can reach back and, and pull things yeah. that you've been playing forever. Um, it's the new stuff that is daunting always. But, um, I went through, I like, I went through a thing like two years ago, actually coming out of COVID where I was like, am I too old for this? Like, am, am, can I not keep up with the newer music? That's not an issue I think anymore. I think that, that music, I think it was just the music that was being produced at that time. The new music that was being produced yeah, at that time for wasn't for me. And it wasn't like, I felt, felt like club ready for me. Um, but now I feel like there's enough artists putting out real, real club forward music that it's it's that that was just a, a frame in time um this so this conversation translates not just for someone like you who maybe goes a couple weeks without playing but it goes for you know we've just been talking we talked to angelo we talked to about solano about these these djs who were playing a lot locally who were taking a step back to focus yeah. on music and present themselves more so as an artist so i think for artists uh this is something that that you know, we're all dealing with also, you know, and for those guys like, like Angelo and Solano who aren't playing as, as often, you know, they're dealing with this too. So it's not just you who's traveling up from Florida. It's for, right. it's for younger artists too, who are like really in the mix. And I think all the things we just talked about translate well to, to this conversation as well. Right. For you guys, it's like, this is an opportunity to go test all the music that you've been making for the last couple of weeks since you've last played. So that's exciting, right? You get to go test all your stuff. Maybe there's some IDs that aren't finished yet. You get to go hear them on a club speakers. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. Um, and for you guys, I think it's also really, really important that you're out when you're not on the weekends, you're not working to, to not only to network, but to hear what's being played and, you get to see the crowd as DJs are playing songs and you really can come back with some inside info of like, well, that really worked or this really didn't work and incorporate that into your sets. And I think another thing is you can constantly, constantly be updating your, uh, your sticks, right? If you're playing sticks as an artist, if you're not actually working, you want to make sure those sticks are updated every single week, just like you would update your computer. Right. So I think those are just some things for the, the artists, not just the DJ to think about when you're not playing as often. I love it. I think that's really good advice for sure. So let's get into a little pop culture because, you know, we've, we've had a couple things going on, yeah. especially in the last two days on my feed, which is, and, and I'm going to prelude this with, I said, should we really talk about this again? <laughs> I'm going to prelude this with, Okay. I understand that we talked about Skrillex, Fortet, and Fred again on two different episodes, but this Fred again, Tiny Desk series um, show, let's call it, has been all over my feed. Not only that, is that I think he's doing a phenomenal job in piggybacking on the success of the MSG show and then moving into something that is completely different and completely opposite and just showcasing his all around talent um, in taking the chance, because this is a huge chance to take in doing the tiny desk series, which is brought to you by NPR, which is, which has been um, a series that's been going on since 2008. 
Uh, they have a, a YouTube channel. Um, I actually don't know if it's broadcast in like a podcast form, like a listening only podcast form. I'm sure it is. Um, but it's been going on since 2008. It's something that I consume regularly. Uh, they've had everybody from the Avit Brothers to Weird Al to uh, Egyptian to Adele. Um, and Adele back in 2011, so like right as her first album dropped, to Jimmy Cliff, the reggae icon, to Moby. Moby was uh, another electronic artist that they had on. Then Passion Pit, that's like this electronic rock kind of mixed kind of a thing. Alt-J, same thing. Miguel. So like it, they run the spectrum. They run the spectrum, and that's why I like, I like to, uh, to watch the series. Um, like, like I said, we don't want to harp on the Fred again thing, but I, I do think this is a great uh, way that, an, uh, that show, showcases an artist really going all in on, on, on what he's doing right now and just putting himself out there as much as possible and striking while the iron's hot. I mean, he's just insanely talented, right? And I think this is a great thing for dance music. It's a great thing for dance music to be put on this type of stage and people that potentially look down on what electronic music producers do can see someone like Fred again and be like, wow, this guy is a musician. He's just using electronic music as his outlet. But if Fred again wanted to go be a whatever, like in any other genre, I'm sure... He could, you know, because he's so talented and he has learned how to play all these different instruments and musically, he's just incredibly, incredibly smart. So I I think it's a great thing for dance music. It brings some shine onto us. It brings some shine on, or brings some new fans uh, that potentially could get into some more traditional EDM dance music type stuff because Fred again is not traditional, right? Like this is... He's way more electronica, and he's different than what we're used to from this style of artist. Yeah, I mean, he he is more electronica. You're right on that. These types of artists have been around for a long, long time, but obviously, we've only we've only seen the um, the uptick in popularity in EDM from what, like 2012 on. So this, so that popularity and that longevity is now gave the opportunity to artists like this to step up and, and, and be in the spotlight. Whereas pre 2012, like EDM was even just kind of like a, a niche thing in America, at least um, you, you had artists back in like 2002, like junkie XL, which probably nobody listening to this would know who that is. Um, I got to see him at ultra music fest back in 03 and he did all live main stage live production. Um, and it was an absolute show, but like I said, EDM wasn't popular at that point. You know, ultra music fest was one day in the park. That was it. Um, so we've transitioned in such a way to where artists like this get to be highlighted, not only on those main stages, but on our radio stations or, or not terrestrial radio, but like our, our EDM radio station satellite and then also like on our YouTube channels and NPR's, M- NPR's Tiny Desk series on YouTube as well, where this particular show has 1.2 million views in two days, which is pretty incredible. I apologize for the technical difficulties, guys. Anybody that's watching, my camera keeps shutting down on me for no reason. Um, Go ahead. You and- deal with that. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take over from this, this point. Yeah. But like... Use this as a way to motivate you if you're a producer, right? You don't have to just go to Splice and download samples and download loops. You can make your own. You could create such cool things with just your voice, right? You have a microphone. I'm sure you have a microphone. You could create, think outside the box. And I think this is showing producers, especially in EDM, that you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You could do something completely from left field and play the xylophone in one of your songs, yeah. and it could work. I think that's why it's so cool. It's the, the creativity, the artistic skill, the musical knowledge. Like It just put on display, and I think it should motivate all of us to be better producers and better DJs, and I think that's amazing from, from sitting here as a, as a podcaster talking about this. Yeah, it, it 
So I, I just, I'm going to get into kind of like the uh, a little bit of the background on the on the Tiny Desk show. Um, so Fred again proposed this idea, and NPR really wasn't sure how this would translate, right? Like an electronic artist that plays in front of huge crowds and does everything like you know it's it's electronic music that is DJed in front of huge crowds. Well, how is this going to translate in an office that's the size of my office, and how is this going to be entertaining for their listeners and their viewers, right? So after he proposes this, he went back and he relearned all of these different instruments in order to recreate the show, the seven uh, track show that, that we saw on, on NPR, right? And there were just like such, there were some instruments that I'd never even heard of, which was kind of funny. Um, yeah, I read, you, I read you the list. The marimba? Yeah, like, I don't even know the, what that is. <laughs> the marimba was in there. Uh, I think like a xylophone was in there. I'm just kind of like looking at at some of the things. But like uh, it's incredible that he went and he put in the work to kind of create this, this whole experience and then to be able to execute it live in real time and like, you know, make beats with literally the desk that they had there, the desk and a microphone and a, and a, and a pedal, right? Like, and just be able to, to execute this in such a way that it was just like this beautiful performance, really good, and it's deserving of all the success um, that it's had so far. Yeah, it's really cool to see, guys. If you haven't watched it, I would. it's only like 30 minutes, so I highly suggest going to check it out. It definitely uh, inspired and motivated me from the production side of things, for sure. Uh, and I'm sure it'll, you know, do the same for you guys. So 100% go check it out. So let's get into our last topic here. All right. So I'm, uh, this last topic, uh, I want to shout out Drew and Fuse. So I listen to the Drew and Fuse show. If you guys want to go check that out, uh, for sure, go check it out. It's another podcast. Yep. Uh, they have a segment where they basically ask their guests, uh, what are the most played songs in your Serato? So Drew and Fuse, if you guys are listening, don't worry. We're just using this for a one time only for me and Gary <laughs> because it was really interesting to see what are some of the songs that we're playing for the last however many years more consistently? I think it was really interesting. So we'll start with your list. What what were some of the, you could, if you want to, I'm going to separate mine into like open format and then like EDM. So if you want to, I'm going to go down like in a row. Um, I'll pick out some of the ones that like, I I know that I'm playing still on a weekly basis. Um, So just for a little context, I've been using Serato since 2008. So, I don't know know when the plays are tracked to, though, because they only brought on this play option like maybe four years ago or something like that. So, okay, so maybe I don't know if it's from when we first like opened our Serato or when it's they when they started doing the play counts. But my history goes back to February 08. So, uh, does it is it adding those? Probably, maybe you're right. Probably, you know. So anyway, um, so that's for a little context. So I've been I've been using Serato now for about 15 years. And uh, no surprise, Luma D, I'll never, uh, uh-oh, you know, it played 254 times. Sweetie, my type, 237, I feel like that might not be correct. I don't know. Maybe. That song's been out longer than you think. Yeah, when was it added? I don't know. It's one of I those that fits it. in with, like, the, the, the female rapper mini sets, you know? Yeah, like, I, if you're doing, like, the, the Hot Girl Summer mini set, like, that song's in there every time. Well, I could tell you, like when I play three sets on a Saturday, it's played in probably two of the three sets. It's that more chill set during the day that it doesn't get played yeah. for. Um, Real Love works. Remix, Real Love Remix, two twenty six. Party Animal, Charlie Black, two twenty six. Love on Top, Ted Smooth Remix, two twenty six. Like I said to you before, I think I played three of those right back to back to back. Um, let's see. Jeez, Wild Thoughts, uh, Ruckus. And re- Ruckus remix of Rihanna, I want you back, Jackson Five. I play a bunch and have played a bunch. Give that's me on my Pitbull. list as well. Um, yeah, just a bunch of stuff. Go ahead, go into go into yours. It's funny, like I I look at this list and I'm like semi. I don't know if I should be embarrassed or what. It's like, <laughs> do I play these? Now I'm in my head, right? Do I play these songs too much? Do, have I? Yeah. If you listen to like an open format cream set, like I'm sure you've heard runs of these songs before. <laughs> so That's apologies to all our DJs that come see me play. Too good. 
Uh, number one for me, bottoms up, which has come back into heavy rotation in my sets. It used to be in heavy rotation. And now in 2023, I feel like this like 2010s hip hop is like peak hour again. It's weird. Yeah. So it bottoms is. up is a big one. For, is number one for me. I think by, by far and away, uh, Calabria is a big one for me. This is how we do it. Montel Jordan, Pitbull and Lil John, the Anthem. I want you back. Uh, Rupee tempted to touch Danza Coduro. Uh, uh, Fetty Wap six, seven, nine is a huge one for me. Probably played in like almost every set at some point of the night. <laughs> And then as far as like the bigger EDM stuff, my number one EDM house track was my Neo Closer edit that I came out with maybe like three years ago. That's crazy. That's like one of those edits that just works at any time in any room type thing. Yeah. Uh, Angel the Kid and Olive Oil, Taylor Swift Love Story, is it works everywhere. Nice. Give Me Everything, Mark Anthony, the Barranquilla uh, Guaracha edit. Angel of the Kids, uh, Sean Kingston, Fire Burning, Tech House remix is another big one for me. Pursuit of Happiness, Endor, Pump It Up, and then Lizzo, uh, Truth Hurts, the Sid remix. Not Endor, Pump It Up, the original. No, like the newer one that came out, the, the Tech House one. one that was like right. literally played in every set for a while for me too. Yeah, that thing was great. I'm, I'm looking at some of my ones down the list here. El Alpha La Mama I played 139 times, and that's, that's not a good one. Old. But like I said, I think I still play that in, in almost every set. Tebote, Alex Dynamics remix, 117. Big shout to Alex Dynamics for that one. Love it. Um, and then my one EDM one that stands out is the Sergeant Slick Gimme Gimme. Yeah, that's a great uh, one. The Melbourne version of that, which is super dope. But yeah, and Clarity HMC remix, which I still play a lot because the crowd still goes absolutely bonkers for that one. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, it's interesting though to just go and look and it's like I, I said like maybe I'm gonna get in my head, but it's good to know what you're playing a lot of because maybe you need to play something else type thing. Or maybe you just need to take a little break from certain tracks. Or right. I think taking this a step further, go look at your history from the last month and see what songs are consistently in all of your sets and maybe try to not play one of those songs. Uh, upcoming now if it's like the newest biggest record that you have to play that's a different story but if it's an older record that you can kind of cycle in and out of maybe it's time to like give some some tracks a break and this is a good way to go and just see what you're doing you know when yeah. you play four five six sets in a week that's a lot of sets over the course of a month and if you're playing one or two or three or a couple songs in a row in all of those sets like people are going to notice if they hear you play multiple times so i think yeah. that's a great way to just check yourself a little bit and, you know, maybe you need to go refresh your warm-up set because these songs, a, a number of these songs are in your warm-up set. Or you need to go refresh your headline hip-hop because you're playing the same thing over and over again. Listen, I do it. It's, I'm, I'm at fault, too. The guys that hear me play a lot, I'm sure have heard certain runs that I've played in multiple, multiple venues. We all yeah. do it. But yep. I think it's just good to be aware of what you're doing and, and just making a little pivot sometimes. Right. Right. It doesn't have to be anything major. You just just don't play the two songs that you might usually play back to back. Just don't do that. It's just that, that that's the part that's noticeable. That's right. the stuff the that runs the bartender is in the, You got to do something different in your runs. And at the time of night that you play it also, that makes yes. a difference. Yeah, for sure. But I think that's a good place to wrap, Cream. A lot of really good information in this uh, in this pod. I really enjoyed this uh, conversation. Yeah, me too, man. It was good to, uh, to talk to you one-on-one -on -one here. These are yeah. always... You know, these are good for our venting sessions. We didn't really do a lot of that today, though. This was like a no. pretty informative pod. So definitely, definitely. Uh, anything we want to promo again, like the get down meetup Wednesday, May 17th at Corgi Distillery, Jersey City. Keep yep. an eye out on socials. You guys are going to see the uh, the the RSVP link. We're going to email. If you want to come to it, you're going to you'll be able to see the link and we'll get it out to you guys for sure. Definitely. Good stuff. All right, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of The Get Down. We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace, guys. Peace. Thanks for listening to The Get Down Podcast. If you enjoy our show and find the topics entertaining or helpful in any way, we would greatly appreciate if you could subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you listen to it. We want to help more DJs, and subscribing, rating, and reviewing the show is the best way for us to do that. We appreciate all the love so far. Thanks for listening, guys.